Welcome to all the people following us online. Bonjour à tous. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. It is a great pleasure to be with you this morning, and what a joy it is to be here in Paris at the Paris Motor Show. This is a really important day for the group and for our brands. And it is a day in which the figure four is going to predominate. Four, as in our four brands that are all presented here, four, as in the four business priorities of the Renault brand, and lastly, four, like the icon that we are going to res resurrect today. So let's go to the heart of the matter, and I'm going to call on the CEO of the Renault Group, Luca De Meo, to come and address us. Hello to all of you. Thank you, Christian. It really is a huge pleasure for me to welcome all of you to our press conference here. Our presence today at the Paris Motor Show is first and foremost a tribute to all those who work in and for the automotive sector and all, all those who are passionate about what we do. That's why the Renault Group is very much present at the Motor Show, simply because we just love it. We love what we do, we love our products, we love cars, and we believe that there is no better place than a physical to show to share all of this emotion. Personally, I have fought throughout my career to stop emotion being taken out of the equation of the car industry. And it is precisely this vision that we have come to share with all of you. The journalists, the Renault teams, our partners, and all car fans. The half a million people who I believe over the next few days will be coming through the Paris Motor Show. As you know, our company has been through some really hard times in the recent years. And I'm quite convinced that in the end, it was really the devotion and the commitment of the women and the men of Renault that saved this company once again. It was their respect for our long history. It was their passion for, their, for the job and their desire to create value for our partners and our customers that really carried us through. And this year, we are showcasing seven world premieres across our four brands. And that really says a lot about what has happened since the last motor show. Our greatest reward is going to be the admiring and joyful looks, I believe, on the faces of the hundreds of thousands of people passing through here. Let's talk a little bit about Renault. The Renault plan is working, and it's actually working faster than we expected it to. We are now entering phase two, and that is the arrival of our new products. We are fully aware that the context will remain difficult and that we still have a lot of work to do to adjust the whole machine. But in the automotive industry, we all know this, it is the product that makes the difference. And our products are coming, and they're going to be stronger than ever. We believe that it's going to be very difficult to uh, stop this momentum. Now, just take a look at Scenic Vision, for example, which is on our stand here at the back. It says a lot about where we want to set the bar in terms of design and technology. This model, or at least something very close to it, is going to be on the market in just a little over a year. <clears throat> and of course, let's not forget Hyvia with its own stand in Hall 3. Hyvia reflects our desire to develop more sustainable solutions for hydrogen-powered commercial vehicles and the entire ecosystem that goes with it. This is a holistic approach to the development of this fuel of the future. And all of this is just an appetizer. We'll have so much more to show you and a lot of work for our engineers and our designers over the years to come because, because between 2022 and 2025, we will be launching 25 new vehicles. I'm really so happy to be sharing this adventure with a fantastic team, in particular the CEO of Mobilize, Clotilde Delvos, of Dacia, Denis Levot, and of Alpine, Laurent Rossi. And I would also like to play, pay special tribute to Jean-Dominique Sénard, the chairman of the board of directors of the Renault Group. Your presence, dear Jean-Dominique, is really a gift to us all. 
let's start with Dacia, if you don't mind any. No brand is able to offer its customers more common sense solutions or more value per euro spent. <clears throat> it is really a unique and inimitable cocktail based on an understanding of what is essential for technology, for production and for marketing. Today, Dacia is off to conquer new customers in the C segment. And this is in embodied by the bigster concept. And the brand is going to adopt a more assertive style with this concept. The Dacia Manifesto, which you see in the corner of the Dacia stand, is clearly just made for adventure and it perfectly em embodies our ambition for this fantastic brand. Alpine, for its part, is really the technological spearhead of the group. Now, after Formula One, after the, re the reveal of the A110 Eternity prototype, and after the A110R that we presented uh, with Laurent in Suzuka a week ago, Alpine is now go going even further, and the proof is here in the shape of Alpenglo. Alpenglow is a completely disruptive concept car. It is Alpine's futuristic vision of automotive excellence. With its hydrogen-powered, clean combustion hybrid engine, Alpenglow takes us into the future of sustainable motorsport. And it's more thrilling than ever. And even further ahead in time, it may also serve as, as an inspiration for standard production vehicles. Why not? Now let's turn to Mobilize, dear Clotilde. This is the group's activist brand. Mobilize addresses the problems inherent in today's mobility. The carbon footprint, the fact that cars are left parked 90% of the time, and that they lose 50% of their value in just three years. <clears throat> And Mobilize deals with this by breaking the codes apart and shifting the lines. It is, of course, an automotive brand, but it starts with services and ends with the product instead of the other way around. With Mobilize, everything is about usage and sharing. We are present here with the Duo. The Duo is the electric quadricycle that you're all going to adore, whether you're car sharing or on subscription. Its design is a clear nod to street culture. And you will see Duo on the streets by end 20, 2023. And in the meantime, if you're on the road, the Mobilize Fast Charge Network is developing a unique ultra-fast charging experience at Renault dealerships, less than five minutes from motorway exits. And with 200, 200 such uh, recharging stations, you'll really soon uh, be able to drive across Europe in an electric vehicle without ever leaving your Renault home behind. And now let's turn to uh, Renault's historic brand, Renault. But uh, I think I've spoken a lot, so I'm going to let uh, Fabrice uh, Combolif, who is the COO of the Renault brand, speak to you about the brand with the diamond. <laughs> So good morning to all of you and thank you so much, Luca, to you and to all the Renault teams who are watching us this morning. The arrival of our new products is accelerating. Renault and its network have gone to great lengths to build a new playing field and it's working. The first lever we're using is the, the electrification of the brand. We are making this transformation with strong targeted technological choices that differentiate us from the competition. On the one hand, we are developing a complete range of e-tech electric models in all segments with best-in-class performance. And our leadership in the French EV market is proof of this. However, we are also banking on a new full hybrid e-tech technology that is being introduced and being ramped up on all of our major combustion models. Clio, Capture, Arcana, and tomorrow on Austral. I'm quite convinced that this new full hybrid technology is the modern, efficient, and economical way to replace diesel. The second lever to further develop our brand is to continue our internationalization. Of our 10 main markets, six are situated outside Europe. Brazil, India, Turkey, Korea, Colombia, Colombia and Argentina. All of them are now jumping on the bandwagon of upgrading and electrification to win with the value policy, which is our third business lever. 
Now, what exactly is this value policy? As uh, Luca told you, it's our love of the product, the pride in our design and our technology, but also a very close relationship with our customers and our network. And this is reflected in more sales to individuals. These sales now count for one out of every two Renault cars sold in Europe. Also, more price tra transparency and a clear and profitable product and service offering. Let's move on to the fourth and final lever, our reconquest of the C segment. And it has got off to a good start. Firstly, Arcana is already making a winning comeback in Europe and worldwide, thanks especially to its hybrid engines. Next, we have the Megane E-Tech. It has already topped electric vehicle sales in France since its launch. We'll have moved very quickly beyond the 40,000 unit mark in Europe even before we open sales in international markets such as Brazil and Turkey. And now, here we've got the Austral making its very first public appearance today. It will be launched in Europe over the next few days and it marks a real generational leap forward thanks to its new E-Tech full hybrid 200 bhp engine with fuel consumption limited to just 4.6 liters per 100 kilometers. It's outstanding connectivity thanks to its open hour link with Google built in, but also its maximum driving pleasure with four control advanced and its four wheel steer. And now to end with, I am very pleased to present also the new Kangoo E-Tech electric. It is part of our C-segment magic quadrant with its 285 kilometers of range. It is, it is best in class. It also retains all of its usual advantages, roominess, modularity, practicality. And of course, it is made in France at the Maubeuge factory within our electricity complex. Luca, in your introduction, you talked about the dedication and the passion of the Renault teams. And I would like to also associate the passion of our dealership networks who share this part transformation and who will be thrilled by what you're going to unveil right now. Come on, let's go to a different segment and a different universe now. Thank you, Fabrice. It's really no secret, I think, that sometimes I'm a little bit nostalgic about the, you know, the way cars used to be seen and looked at and made. And I just love legendary cars. And the Renault 5 Turbo 2, which was presented right here in 1982, is certainly one of those. And there's no doubt that that car was a legend, especially for rally fans like me. Oh, at Renault, we all love it, and we had this huge desire to resurrect it in order to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the R5, but obviously completely making it into a car of today. We thought that if we managed to do this properly, we could just travel back to our sources, to our roots, and just simply enjoy ourselves. And actually, just a few years ago, this car was unveiled at the Chantilly Concours d'Elegance, where it was paraded among super luxury cars, and it won the public prize. It's a vehicle that was defined by some car journalists in the, as being wacky and delirious. Well, we just love that because it means that we are not the only ones to be delirious. It's a rear-wheel drive car with two electric motors offering a total power of 380 bhp, 700 newton meters of torque with peak speeds of 200 kilometers per hour. It's actually a born drifter. It's a bundle of dynamite that can do a, a hundred, a zero to a hundred from a standing start in just 3.5 seconds. Finally, I would like to let you in on a little secret and also a dream that we have. We've almost found the technical solutions uh, to actually make this car work, right, Gio? We just need to fit it into our budgets. But if business goes better than expected, maybe we'll actually be able to develop it because it would be perfect for it to be the Renault brand's top of the range car. Our dream also is to see a car like this running over the Turini Pass in the hands maybe of a, a worthy successor of Ragnotti. 
and competing in the World Rally Championship. But for that, obviously, the FIA needs to review its regulations and uh, needs to allow pure electric cars in. Now, gentlemen of the FIA, it is up to you to engage with the solution because we have actually found the solution. I can see that we've got some rally fans with the audience. Okay, let's move on now to the car that could really be one of the stars of this show. Here's another legend, undoubtedly one of the most emblematic cars in the history of the brand. I'm sure you can all guess that I am talking about the Renault 4. The Renault 4 really did left, leave its mark on its era. And this car still means something to millions of people around the world. Over 8 million units were sold from the 1960s to the 1980s in over 100 countries. For many of those who owned one, it made their very first car affordable. The 4L was appreciated and it was used by everyone from uh, country priests to hippies going through postmen and the gendarmes of Saint Tropez. And I've never said this, but my very first car was a white Renault 4L. And I think that this capacity of the 4L to appeal to so many different sensibilities is one of the things that makes it unique. The 4L is a myth, and myths never die. Today, it is this dimension of a universal car, a car that everyone can love, that we want to reach through a modern and electric reinterpretation of the Renault 4. Let's make way for the Forever Trophy. Thank you, Luca. Good morning to all of you. To begin with, I'd like to thank Harmony Le Coq Caillou and Melody Le Saint, the two winners of the 2022 uh, 2022 4L Trophy, uh, who just revealed the Forever Trophy. Thanks and congratulations to both of you. Now, this show car is built around the values of the 4L Trophy, a fresh, youthful, sporty race based on, based on principles of solidarity that are especially close to our hearts. Above all, the show car projects us immediately into a 100% electric future. Of course, we wanted to pay respect to the heritage of the 4L. You can recognize the main features of the original car at first glance. Its overall silhouette, from the shape of the bonnet to the famous rear end sloping down to the bumper, the trapezoidal side window uh, centered above the rear wheel, the iconic large horizontal grille, grill, sorry, incorporating round headlights that we have reinterpreted with LED mattresses, and the outline of the grille and the logo will now be lit up. And then, of course, there are the vertical capsule-shaped taillights, very recognizable, that are set in a rounded corner, very characteristic of the old 4L. Using these ingredients, our intention was to propose a design that would be relevant to those who knew the 4L and its glorious history, but also to younger generations for whom maybe the story may have less evocative power. We have therefore developed a very fresh visual language uh, tending towards modernity and sophistication. But the question you always have about a show car like this is, what are you going to keep of this on the standard production car? Well, it's the whole upper part, all the stuff that's light gray here without the wheel on the roof maybe. 
but you will see all of this driving along the, along the streets tomorrow. The lower part, however, is a different story. It's a story of exploring, of adventure, of discovery, of the ab ability to go further and to surpass oneself. That is exactly the spirit of the 4L trophy asserted here in a spectacularly intensified manner. And above all, it is the idea that an electric car, tomorrow's electric 4L, will be able to take you anywhere, just as its ancestor has done and is still doing since 1962. Thank you. Merci, Gilles. Merci beaucoup. Thanks, Gilles. Uh, so the Forever Trophy show car is the forerunner of the future 100% electric B-segment SUV. With this car and the new R5, in two years' time, Renault will have a complete and completely electric range in the B-segment. Both these models will be produced in our Renault Electricity uh, complex in France, which is going to represent a huge win for those facilities. Before we conclude, I have one more thing that I want to reveal and that I want to talk to you about. I remember when I was a kid, there were two Renault cars. The, uh, there was one Renault car, sorry, the uh, Electronic 11, R11. I don't know if you remember it. It was quite an ugly car, actually, but it had something quite unique. It spoke. And that's where we went back to for this idea. With today's technology, obviously, you can do a lot more than just make a car talk. You can make it intelligent and it can learn. And that's what we are going to do. We're going to make cars almost human. There aren't many brands worldwide that can do that, apart from Renault. And it would completely change the relationship with the machine and therefore also with the brand. I'm sure that people are going to just love it, not just the kids, adults as well. What we're going to do is, we're going to build into the car a companion that I can talk to while I'm driving, let's say, that's going to make my life easier, that's going to tell me where and when to go to charge my batteries and give me personalized suggestions that will suit me along the way. Now, let's call somebody and all of this is going to become very clear. Hey, Reno. Renault, je suis l'avatar officiel Renault. Merci, Lucas. Ravi d'être là. À bientôt. Well, you have just met Reno. This new friend of all Renault owners will be included in the future Renault 5 electric car in 2024 and then in the future Renault 4 electric car. Reno is small, but he's got a huge brain stored somewhere in the cloud, chock full of artificial intelligence, and it will constantly learn from its users' data to much better anticipate their needs and to respond to them. I think, I believe, I'm quite convinced that it's going to get adopted very quickly. It really was a great joy for all of us, all my colleagues and myself, to have presented all of our newest products that you will now be able to take a much closer look at. Uh, and you know, the magic of uh, car shows is also that they give us an irreplaceable glimpse of the incredible inventive spirit that our industry is just bubbling over with. Uh, thanks to all those who are keeping the uh, Paris Motor Show alive. A lot is happening in the car industry today. I believe that we are at a turning point which also represents huge opportunities for us by using innovation to sublimate the love we have for cars and to project it forward into a new modernity. The best thing to do is to walk along the aisles of the show, uh, including uh, to our, our competit competitor stands, obviously, to find out what's going on. And that's what we're all going to do now. So thank you all again for coming, and I hope you have a wonderful day. And uh, thanks again to all of the teams of Renault. You're doing a great job, and I'm really, really proud of all of you. Thank you. <laughs>